This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture here in our tropical town of Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, welcome back means for me, I'm back because I've been in Germany for the past uh, three months and DeSoto was kindly covering and we had shows every other week and now I'm back. And before I dive, we dive back into our everyday island routine, I thought I'd take advantage of my time away and sort of this, uh, take advantage of a distant view of our island in Hawaii. So for that, I brought a special guest with me from Germany, and that is Suzanne. Welcome, Suzanne, to the show. Uh, great to have you. Thank you. And so we want to jump right in and, and show a couple of pictures because you're back to the island of Oahu. And when have you been here before? Oh, that's a long time ago, 18 years ago, 1999. All right. I spent time here. And can we get picture number one for that, please? These are some impressions of uh, you way back. There you go. So. Oh, that's Hawaii Kai, yeah. Exactly. I remember that picture. Exactly. And so you obviously were, uh, were here, were excited about being in our tropical paradise, and it looks like you dressed accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. You were excited about the things one might wear on the islands. Very flowery dresses, beautiful. And so let's jump to the next picture, which shows even more, I think, your interest and your perception and your passion about the tropics, right? Because where you come from, no such things exist, right? Is that yes, correct? Of course. So uh, a palm tree, a, a coconut, uh, even dress even less, right? And really enjoy, or I would say indulge in the tropics. Is that fair to say? Yes, it is. All right. So let's jump to the next picture, which shows the next stage of you really wanting to be one with nature and the elements. And this sort of passion, also, you made your profession. Will you help us to explain a little bit the certificate we see on the right? Yeah. Um, after my extended stay here on Hawaii, I decided to proceed a career in tourism and business management, so I went to university for that and got my master's in tourism, and um, I always wanted to sell those dreams to other people that I got to see when I was young and, um, yeah. Awesome. So since this show, I mean, tourism is a, is a big thing and it's encompassing a lot of things, but this show is about architecture as well. And so let's jump to the next picture. And you were kind enough to go to your archive and dig out some pictures that actually have architecture as a background. So please explain to us you know, what these are and why you think the pictures were taken with these specific buildings. Well, these pictures um, were taken, and I wanted to keep some memories um, to take home with. So the Rainbow Tower, that's a typical um, yeah, building that connects with Oahu and Honolulu, Waikiki. Everybody knows the Rainbow Tower. So, and um, I went surfing with be a big bear, or I think was his name, <laughs> and we took this picture just mm -hmm. to remember the day. It's and, and very interestingly, the building in the background of Big Bear and you surfing, you you uh, you call that what? Uh, a shadow house. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, uh -huh. It's yeah. very interesting yeah. because you identify it has layers on the facade that keeps it easy breezy mm -hmm. while shading it, right? Mm -hmm. Very important aspects here that architecture should, should have. And there's another building. We're actually going to go to a Dokomomo board meeting after the show together. And so there's a, the next uh, picture is a building that we all love as Dokomomo members here. Which, which one is that? That's in Kahala. That's the Kahala Hilton. Yeah. I got to spend time there. And um, it's 
so, just so beautiful and the view and the architecture is just astonishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me as a, as a critical observer, it's interesting that you didn't have someone take pictures in, in front of huts, grass huts, holly peely huts, uh, sort of nostalgic sort of um, illusions of a paradise, but actually sort of this evolved uh, metropolitan paradise where architecture is urban, right? Uh, uh, that's rather unusual. There's not too much tiki housing left, unfortunately. That's true. That's you gotta go further down to Polynesia. Uh huh. Uh huh. If you want those, yeah. That's true. Well, the tourism industry tries to fake these today and tries to make them and, and sort of satisfy the needs of people who come here, but maybe. Uh, this is our point. Maybe we need to maybe rethink tourism in, in its nature. And in order to do so, we really spent the time when we were back in Germany, if we can get the next picture, to look how apparent pre prevailing uh, the Hawaiian culture is on the other side of the, of the world. So please explain these, you know, uh, row of pictures here. Well, that picture, you see me in a typical Bavarian dress. It's called Dernbo. And the girls wear it um, at Oktoberfest, um, this big festival that takes place in Munich in September every year. It's a beer festival. And we dress up in this local dress and um, to show our heritage. And uh, we're proud. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, you see I'm having fun there. There are lots of rides. and and food and gathering and millions of people come to visit every year. Mm -hmm. So and, and the Oktoberfest in Bavaria is, is certainly what Americans and Hawaii has become, for better or worse, part of America, the 50th state. So most Americans consider Bavaria to be the original, the true uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. And so when Germans think about Hawaii, they're also associated with clothing, with dressing. The soda and I are going to make a show about the skins in the future. That's almost challenging and uh, yeah, show that we're going to have ahead of us. And so, the, certainly the hula skirt is like the synonym for the uh, Hawaiian Islands and the female uh, uh, people wearing that. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the equivalent of that in, in, in your culture? It has to do well, with the other picture. That would be the dirndl for the girls and the leather trousers, the leather hose for the guys. Mm -hmm. um, once you're grown, um, you can order one. It's um, custom made and uh, it's pretty expensive. And uh, you can just, yeah, it's custom branded and it lasts for 20 or 30 or more years. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, mm -hmm. um, so what has this gentleman been doing here with uh, the two cultures? This is, uh, I see a, a young a guy uh, from our neighbor town, and he um, has been blending the traditional leather trouser with uh, the Aloha Bavaria, um, kind of his own branding to bring the exotic, the tropical to Bavaria. and. Uh, and we see, we yeah. saw that more and more happening. We go to the next picture. Even like, uh, you know, a very close friend of yours are on the same train. If you can get the next picture, please. Um, pretty soon. Oh yeah, this is an old Volkswagen bus. Um, a friend of mine owns a, a, a car shop, a garage, and he fixes up those buses. And uh, like you see, he branded it with um, the local flowers, which are not typical in Bavaria, but um, when you travel in one of those cars, um, you get this feeling of uh, tropic and exotic and um, adventure, mm -hmm. and I think that's what he wanted to express. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Next picture is me and a very good friend of mine, uh, uh, Kirsten, who uh, gave me this gift of these, these uh, swimming pants. Uh, and who are basically my hood. This is my neighborhood. We ran a show about the Waikiki Grand. And uh, interesting, this is a Hollister uh, California uh, trousers. And um, it's not even giving any further indication. There's no labeling Hawaii or Honolulu or Waikiki, which it all is. So it's sort of self-explanatory. Yes. And we found this rather intriguing as well. And the next picture is uh, 
Kristen again and her husband Stefan, who had just installed a tiki bar in their basement. And that, in Germany. In Germany, exactly. And that's, again, they're, they're big uh, fans. Hi, Kristen and Stefan. Thanks for watching. And they're big Hawaii fans. They've been here and they will come again next year. So this, again, is, is, is quite the expression of appreciation for a culture uh, half around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, next picture, uh, once again, there's almost no place we found out where you go where you can get away from it. I mean, even in a Home Depot here, there is a stand of uh, metal plates, like license plates, and one of them is a Loa Tiki bar. I should get that, you know, Kristen and Stefan. <laughs> and, you know, what was your finding on the very right of the picture here? Yeah, on the right side, you see um, the stationery uh, store, uh, a local store, you know tiny town and uh, you get those pencil cases and it says Hawaii on it and it has the flowers and the ocean and kids can buy that for school mm -hmm. even though we are on the other side of the world from mm -hmm. Hawaii. And mm -hmm. It's rather they remarkable. Like it. The next picture sort of equally interesting. What is that? Oh, well, I, I guess we can see yeah, a backpack. You want to, you have some uh, memories of Aloha backpacks, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember when I was here and then I wanted to take something home, and that was in 2000. I, I bought this Eve pack. Uh, it was a green backpack, and it had all the main Hawaiian islands on it. And I took it home, and I went to school with it, to college, and uh, I loved it. And it's still there. It lasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they still sell those backpacks. Now, this is a different um, brand. brand. Well, we don't want to. Yeah. have any publicity but yeah and we ran across that because our business partner Isabel needed one for her daughter Teresa and yeah. she got that one she that got was, that, that one was the favorite for this upcoming school year mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. next picture what is that oh that's uh, Jochen Schweitzer he's a, um, a local um, person that um, how do you say that he, he's an event manager, I Event guess, management, kind of yes. He offers um, events you can book. Mm -hmm. And uh, they offer, in, next to my town, they offer this indoor surfing for people. And you can experience the waves. You get the board, you get the suit. And um, they sell those events instead of, they say, why don't you have an event uh, instead of just buying some flowers or some mm -hmm. chocolate for mm -hmm. the birthday. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give a gift certificate and let people have mm -hmm. an event? And mm -hmm. one of them is indoor surfing. Mm -hmm. And once again, the, the big Hawaiian waves, mm -hmm. the big waves in the back. Sort North, of are shore, the, are yeah. the North Shore, yeah. <laughs> no, not, no yeah. pub line there. But <laughs> they are not trying. Quite. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's also this one spot at the Izar ride, which is called the Ice. What's it called? The ice. Eisbach. Eisbach. Yeah. yeah. We have a wave um, in Munich at the Eisbach in the English Garden, and uh, you can surf year round. Mm -hmm. You can surf. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very cold. Mm -hmm. People do it. <laughs> very cool. You get this feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we have one last encounterment with Hawaiian culture, which is this one here. What is that? Oh, yeah. We went to the movies, and uh, that's the latest minion. A movie, and uh, they were again um, bringing up the Aloha and Hawaiian mm -hmm, culture mm -hmm. in uh, this tree house. The kids um, with the minions. Exactly. So fun. you got the lays, you got the ukulele, you got the coconut bra, you got it all, mm -hmm. right? So um, all that being said, um, that raised the question we were talking: if if Hawaii is so apparent perceptionally already mm. above and beyond where it is, what does that mean as far as the uh, sort of expectations of visitors, right, tourists who basically come and come here? How can reality hold up, you know, be uh, as exciting as the perception, as the, the hope, you know? Well, the expectations are very high. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this paradisic island, so far away, 22-hour flight, 12-hour mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. time difference. Yeah, yeah. So, so go to the next picture, which is a little bit of a shock because that's what people find these days, right? 
Yeah. I mean, that's uh, you you jog you jog by there in the morning, you know, and and that's what you see. And yeah, we, we pulled this this couple here is pulled from a website that's called What Not to Wear in Hawaii, and 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 this is typical how people basically put on these uh, symbols, you can mm -hmm. say, that, that suggest you're sort of part of the culture, but the question is to what degree are you actually, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go to the next picture, this traces back to your core qualification, mm -hmm. and uh, so what do you think? This is a standardized hotel room, and uh, this could be a paper back wall, um, diamond head, and um, yeah, it looks like any hotel anywhere in the world, and you don't really feel that you're in Hawaii mm -hmm. unless you open the sliding doors and um, mm -hmm. you hear it and you smell it and you see it. But mm -hmm. There's no indication, really, that you're in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So that's probably there's. I, I heard some sort of some uh, desire of such kind to feel the real thing, so maybe that's, that's illustrated by the next picture, which uh, also uh, illustrates um, another tropic area, mm. that culture that you have experienced, right? Yeah, that's, that was in Brazil, where we took an extended trip. Um, friends of mine during university, and uh, you can really feel the nature there and um, go to the waterfalls and, and feel the water and the warmth and the sun, whereas at, at some artificial hotels they have waterfalls, but you're not allowed to go there and the water is chlorine water and sweet water and yeah, just uh, artificial. So you want the real deal I do. still and increasingly maybe. So let's go to the next picture, which is your current experience, at least the picture on the top right. Uh, you experience that right now, right? Mm -hmm. And we ran a show about this project here with Tom Miller, who's a resident of the Waikiki Grand, and you're currently living there, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe you explain a little bit how life is in this little bit different uh, way of um, dwelling. Well, this is not one of the upscale, um, all air-conditioned, fancy hotels. It's more, they keep it more air traditional with um, if you don't want you don't need to put the AC on you can live on the lanai and have the door open and the wind the trade winds coming through and um, yeah mm -hmm. hear the animals in the morning mm -hmm. as it's close to the zoo and hear the ocean at night and uh, mm -hmm. they give you the opportunity not to be boxed in and um, mm -hmm. yeah. great and so based on your enthusiasm and appreciation of such things, I allowed myself to share with you one of the projects we have in the making here, which is the mm -hmm. Primitiva Tower. And this is a suggestion of how these, what we call slices of paradise, could be. So this is a very tiny space, very minimal, very reduced to the, to the essence. And, but it has all the elements that you were just talking about, right? It makes mm -hmm. you feel the breeze. It has vegetation. Um, and all these things. So the question is always when we come up with these sort of visions that people say, well, that doesn't work because, you know, we've never seen. Where's the furniture, right? Yeah. Where's, how does it work? So maybe we jump to the next picture mm -hmm. and we can indeed see how it would unfold, right? Literally. And so out of this box in the back, you know, the kitchen unfolds, the little room unfolds, and the, the couch unfolds out of the floor. So it was interesting, when we were back in Germany, um, a friend of yours is actually uh, demonstrating that that kind of interior design approach actually works, and we see that on the next picture. Mm. So, yeah. This is the house of a friend of mine. She bought for her family. With, uh, it was built by an architect, and uh, as you can see there, they have a built-in kitchen and rooms, and. Right behind me, there's the bathroom. You don't even, you almost don't see the door. Um, so it's possible. Mm -hmm. And where she is is actually the kitchen. Yeah. There's a little niche there, and you can open it up when you want to make a cappuccino, which you did for us. Mm -hmm. And once you're done, you just close it, and you don't look at a, you know, messy at times kitchen because that's what kitchens are. And you can open all the um, 
cupboards mm -hmm. behind the wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was very good for me to see uh, sort of a applied uh, uh, project that you can Space see. Space very well used and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very thoughtful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And also the use of wood. We, we suggest to use the uh, invasive albicia wood, and this is very raw, sawn, you know, very local wood. It's probably larch wood or something mm -hmm. like that. So it's very kind of rugged and rustic. Which your culture partly is, you know, Bavaria is a very wooded area, mm. you know, very sort of grounded. And the later holes, as you told me before mm. the show, is sort of a synonym for that sort of very earthy, mm. very rustic and and natural. It's it's a it's an animal skin. You right? cannot really wear it down even mm -hmm. after thirty or forty years. It mm -hmm. just the skin gets looser, but it usually doesn't tear apart. Yeah, yeah. And that would be good if that would be the same for buildings, and it gets us to the next picture, right? If, if a building would be so durable, you know, that all the wood surfaces would get better over time, right? They pick up patina, and mm -hmm. they're real, like the lederhosen is real, you know, this is not like a, a, a layer, this is not a, a skin that you can peel off, it's actually the real skin, right? So that applies to that as well. So tell me your thoughts about that picture, which is um, the, the, the common space, right, the circulation space outside of the units, and, and how maybe it relates to your uh, um, uh, experience within your Waikiki Grand right now. Well, the common space becomes more and more important um, as for the gentrification and the, the families not being as large as they used to be. Mm -hmm. So elderly people as well as the kids, they need to interact somehow while the parents are at work and um, need to make a living. And um, yeah, the, the individual, individual space is more and more limited and very costly. Mm -hmm. So we should consider that we need more common and open space mm -hmm. available for everyone. And that we all share and we socially engage mm -hmm. and that way we're not isolated. You see, mm -hmm. like, we put Granny in there who watches the kids, you know, mm -hmm. she's not locked away. And yeah. so it goes back to the, the way it used to be, right, in, in all cultures, pretty much. And the next picture is probably the most polemically provocative of, of the project that we suggest that the inner core, which is sort of like the lung of the building, has a stainless steel netting which functions like a trampoline. Right? <laughs> And a trampoline is very familiar to you, right? Yeah. I remember a lot of occasions where, you know, we talked about trampolines. Yeah. Right? Because... Um, in a lot of backyards back in my country, they have trampolines for the kids. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. just love it. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So maybe that's a good segue into the next picture, because you talked about the kiki. So tell us some of your backgrounds and your involvement with the yeah. children. Well, I work in the field of education right now, and um, children, when they gather, they they want to be in a in a space in a natural environment, and yeah, they want to just be part of it and um, experience uh, one another, and um, yeah, just have a good time together and not be somewhere isolated or locked mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So they are very social. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll explain that the left picture is from way back. Yeah, that's way back, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. in the kindergarten here in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the picture on the right? And the picture on the right that was taken last Christmas, that's a school in Germany, where they do, what did we do? Oh, that's... Nikolaus. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's Claus. Yeah, that's Santa Claus. They celebrate and mm -hmm. they invited the parents. Mm -hmm. and they prepared a show for the parents. Mm -hmm. They were very excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I found this intriguing because it was feeding into our search and research for the optimal layout of the Primitiva building. And we ended up with a circular form. So mm -hmm. here you pulled out that picture, which shows the children sitting in a circle. In a circle, yeah, which is, I think, the most natural way of coming together mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. everybody can see. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. interact. Mm -hmm. So you're speaking from your own experience and your own children, and and also being an educator, and and find the built environments very important, right? For because you actually prefer, as you are, for your kids to be out in nature, right? Oh, if I, I mean, can. 
yeah. and you try it. Yeah. I mean, you've been living that for a while and try mm -hmm. to, you know, homeschool and, and, and be out and about and not be stuck in artificial environments. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if we have to make artificial environments, then we better make them as good as nature. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the point of Primitiva. And maybe the next picture is an illustration because, and that's also the permanent background picture all the time. It just shows the, the sky garden, you know, so yeah. the building on top, once again, what you're advocating for has a communal space and um, has a lot to do with the experience with, you know, the elements of nature, with birds and plants. And but it looks like you're also growing something there. Is yeah. Are those bananas? Or? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We do. Okay. We do. And that gets us to the next picture where uh, this is food. I know food is very mm -hmm. important for you in, in many ways, also for your children. So this is what we're suggesting to have that food either grown on top of the building or being brought in from farms via rail again mm -hmm. and basically have a farmer's market on the bottom of the building. So it's a big shaded plaza that you buy your food and you walk it up and you don't have trash and waste and all these things. So, mm -hmm. so would you think that would be attractive for you know, your kids to grow up in an environment? Oh, very like? much so. You know, when my kids went to forest kindergarten for a year, that was the most exciting time for them. They're still talking about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was years back and they're still talking about that, how they go part of their food that they had for lunch and how they were preparing it every day with an open fire and uh, mm -hmm. making everything from scratch and mm -hmm. um, getting some herbs and uh, berries and potatoes and carrots and salad and yeah that's good so we count you guys in i guess <laughs> and that gets us to the end of the show and our final picture uh which makes me thanking you for having been on the show and you've been the first person from your discipline from the hospitality industry so to speak or tourism however you want to call it who looked at mm -hmm. our suggestion uh, of an inclusive environment and mm -hmm. we're on an island that's dominated by tourism and the military and so we maybe should think about sort of a rejuvenation of that kind of activity to mm -hmm. say the least and uh, yeah so Thank you for that. Uh, any final thoughts you have? Well, thank you, Martin, very much for having me on the show. And mm -hmm. I hope you get to realize your building and um, that a lot of people get to live there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Very encouraging your uh, appreciation and sympathy. And I sort of, sort of store it in my mind as sort of an advocacy for um, the authentic mm -hmm. versus the synthetic which we're seeing a lot with these sort of Hawaiiana Aloha shirts they're all made out of plastic and manufactured somewhere else. But it seems like you're really advocating for the real deal in a very holistic way. So that's very encouraging. Thank you. So thank you very much for being on the show and your encouragement. And uh, yeah, thanks very much again. Uh, with that, uh, we're at the end of the show. We look forward to see you uh, next week for another episode of Human Humane Architecture here from our tropical paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. Bye-bye. <laughs>